ku kweli ni nani kama wewe bwana hakuna mwingine kama wewe bwana hakuna in that mood of prayer i want to present our speaker to god so we bow down and say a short prayer for our speaker Lord Jesus, we thank you and we glorify your holy name. We thank you for our speaker, our own uh, Pastor Alice King of Glory. We accord her with your grace. We accord her with your blessing, King of Glory. Give, give her King of Glory um, and use her unto your best knowledge, King of Glory. We thank you and we glorify your holy name. For this we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we appreciate this great team? And I want to believe this was prophetic. And I pray you can receive it. Remember, it's only that which you receive that will benefit you. So if you receive, it is not drama. We were not acting. I pray that it will be actualized in your life, in your family. You'll go and write a candle for others. We were reminded that fire, you cannot ignore it. Because it will burn you. You cannot ignore it. Now we can put off our candles so that we may concentrate. So that it don't burn your beautiful dress. Amen. Amen. And then we can have our seats. Amen. It's nice to see each one of you this afternoon. Thank you for agreeing to come and cover the house of God. Did you know uh, the, the house of God is not the pillars and the, and the seats? You are at the temple. So when you are here, this is the house of God. And I want to believe you came with the daughters in your house or in your neighborhood. How many of us, you know, I'll, I'll say this again and again. How many of us came with their daughters? Um, ebusu mameni, you know, tutasema hiyo mpaka wale about tunagojea daughters in law, wataoba, wata accelerate maobi, hallelujah. If you know you came with your daughter or daughters, this one, it should be a mark. Every day we come for DOI, we will recognize so that we keep on reminding ourselves that this one is generational. We are handing over, just like we have been writing the cardinals and write, passing it on. We are passing on values. Amen. And by the way, I'm also studying. I can see my one and only firstborn there. Hi, Nyambura. Bwana asifiwe. My one and only lastborn up there. Bwana asifiwe, joy. Amen. I like that. Ata wako goja ni wabia wajipiga myself. Tukujipiga, tukujivijari. Hatuna ubaya. Na nisawa, tukama hauna. You know there are those of us who are single. Praise God because you are our next. Imagine it you still come to pass. And those of us who only have got boys, hallelujah. You are the blessed of the Lord. You are the one who will end up with all the daughters. So don't, don't look at it from only one angle. Amen. So here, and those of us who are not yet married, I am prophesying that in your due season, you are getting your husband and you are getting your sons and daughters in Jesus' name. If you believe it, you can receive it because what God has done for us and all this, he can do it for you. We are all candidates of his grace. Are you a candidate of the grace of God? Amen. Oh, Tohoro Bisha, joy. On public demand, can you kindly come? We be take Kwanza leo ni kona wawili. Hallelujah. Na wananiabia gata waki wachini tunaweza kujipiga tu hapa. Is she coming? Ama ametoka. <laughs> Why? Uko? Don't worry. Wali peraka bali, sasa ukekua umefika, but you are on ministry. Appreciate joy. Why the raro? Amen. Amen. She's on the sound, lakini kwa sababu ni generation, no. I want it to sink. So that even as you look at your small, there's one, a daughter of one of the ladies here. Aliniambia sasa mebakisha miyakamiwiri. Anza kukuja DOI. 
kwa sababu mwezi huu alifikisha 11 amebakisha miaka miwili now that is the, the expectancy i would want to create kama wewe utaki kualika wako kuna mwingine anasema biri two more bad days i qualify for doi hebu kujeni hapa tupigwe picha on public demand sio mimi nimesema hebu kujeni juu sita bed the other one nilikubali hii nimekataa ama wamekataa Ebu kujeni hapa. Sasa wengine hata na wengine ni wageni hata wawajui. And then I'll be at the midro because it is first and last and me the midro. <laughs> My great daughters, yeah. Amen. I won't apologize. Amen, amen. So I am so happy to see each one of you. I want to sincerely appreciate the ladies, the leaders, for your labor of love amongst God's people. You have continued to lead these daughters of impact. And let me tell you, seriously, those who have decided to grow, they have grown. And their growth is visible. I also want to thank every one of you that turned up. Thank you for keeping the date. One thing I'm 100% sure is that you, you didn't come because you lacked something to do. You came because you purposed to come. And of course this, I was telling Beatrice there, sasa hii kushida Mwuchi kire bini haa. Iri sisida ikiaguka. Lakini muna kaa poa sana. I'll praise God for the creativity. And that is the daughters of impact. Amen. You know what? Even if you had decided to ignore them. Utajikuta ukijiuliza wewe. Na haa ni kina nani. One of the pastors said. Ati ya meona hawa dada wanakaa imported. Amen. Na hata kuwa imported, sinisawa. Eh, daughters of impact wanaedaga bali. Amen. So for the creativity, we praise God. And I want to ask you, why did you come? Najua hiyo ilikuwa yangu, nimejitekenezea kwa nini ulikuja. But why did you come? Two things. Number one, you need people and they need you. So, daughters of impact, I want you by the grace of God. Learn to value people. Believe in them. Put effort to connect with them. Maybe some of us have not yet connected fully with our destinies because you have assumed people. This is a forum where God needs to work on our attitude towards people because you never know what is being carried by your neighbor. The Bible says that God has given us, his divine power has given us everything. And I'm here to present it to you. The custodians of the everything is your neighbor there. That neighbor, that neighbor behind and in front. They are the custodians of everything that you need. You need somebody to cater for your function, you will find them in the house of God. You need somebody to get you a very nice house help. Their connection will come from the house of God. So whenever daughters of impact you come around, you had better enlarge your space for people. Value people, embrace them, connect with them. You are not doing them a favor. Actually, you are doing yourself a favor. So you need to come so that you may connect with people. And it is biblical. It has a biblical backing. Hebrews 10, 24 say, talks about we should not neglect meeting together like it's a habit of some, but I'm so glad that those who have got that habit are not here because you are the ones with the habit of coming to the house of God. And let me tell you, the Lord will bless you. Learning from the word of God. I, I came across a write-up, eh? from one of the literature, great writers. And this is what he wrote, and I want to read for you. A man who calls his kinsmen to a feast does not do so to redeem them from starving. They all have food in their own houses. When we gather together in the moonlight village ground, it is not because of the moon. Every man can see it in his own compound. We come together because it is good for kinsmen to do so.
Therefore, let us continue with the teen spirit and enjoy the power of togetherness. What am I trying to say? I know you can decide to have a, your small fellowship in your own compound, brokienu, protienu. But when we come here, we, there is a lot of synergy. You are able to celebrate even your birthday. Do you know there's a lot of impact? I don't know whether, whether she is here. She told me half, she, was, she celebrated, by the way, she's my age mate, or even, or even older. She celebrated her first birthday at the DOI. So you are still making history. Yeah. You, may, you know, maybe you are a digital. You started celebrating when the, you didn't even know you are celebrating birthday. You know, parents, when you are celebrating one year, are you sure that one is, does know that we are celebrating? Are you sure you are not the one celebrating on behalf of your son or daughter? But this one, at my age, decades, si moja, si biri, si tatu, si tano, zina songa, na me celebrate hapa. So even if it was for only that, that's the Bible principle, that he leaves the 99 for that one. She felt so nice. Imagine I was celebrated by so many of you. Amen. So for the first time in her life, in her life, she celebrated a birthday. However, having said all that, I pray that this afternoon you will choose to see and experience Jesus. Men, ladies may not change your circumstances. My prayer is that today will count in shaping your destiny. And because Jesus is present, the Bible says in the book of Matthew 18, 20, that where two or three gather in his name, he's there in their midst. I have got good news for you this afternoon, that Jesus is present. You meet Jesus, your destiny is changed. You meet Jesus, you go out smiling at his voice. The Bible says that even trees clap their hands. Ask me how I don't know, but the Bible says and I know when you meet Jesus, things can't be the same. I am so aware that our topic this afternoon is, what is our topic? Intentional. And I want to say this. We need progress in all the areas of your life. All-rounded, progressive daughter of impact. You need progress in your faith, progress in your family, in your finances, in your health. I don't know the goals you made at the beginning of the year, but I want to submit to us. You, for you to be a daughter of impact, a world changer, you need progress in all those areas of your life. Otherwise, you look so odd, it's like if you went outside there and found a brother in a suit with a monyonyi. So you automatically know something, you may not understand what is wrong, but something, you know something is not adding up. And those of us who come, who come from where I come from, you should ask, na huyu ako peke yake kweli? You know, you look until you are not alone, ukona watu wengine, because of how and progressive, you know, you, it, progress and growth and successful, they can be inter interchangeably used. So we need progress in all these areas of our life. Progress, growth, success is not for the extraordinary people. I have got good news for each one of us. That progress or a success or a growth is not for a, a certain kind of people. It is for the ordinary person like you and me. People with challenges, people with questionable pasts, people with family backgrounds which are questionable. If you want to know, go and ask Joseph. Joseph was from such a dysfunctional family. Number one, from a polygamous family. Number two, from a preferred mother, Rachel, but who took too long to get a baby. He was from a family which the mothers, no, not the children, 
the mothers used to fight or to quarrel. I, I am assuming we are a familiar with the story. The way Leah, just because she had been blessed with many children, she used to harass the mother of Joseph. Joseph was an ordinary boy from a very dysfunctional family. And maybe you are listening to me. And when you, heard the, you saw the topic, progre prog intentional progress, the word intentional should have given you hope. Because when it comes to intentional, it means it is planned for. If you had not planned, so you can plan. It is not too late to get started. But however, let me tell you, in spite of all what had happened in Joseph's life, didn't he end up as a prime minister? And this afternoon, I want you to disregard your past. Because you can start afresh today, today. Tell your neighbor today. You can start now. And you are not too old to get started. By the way, Moses was commissioned to deliver the children of Israel when he was 80 years old. Are you 80? At least I can't see somebody here who is 80 years old. Actually, majority, I have that one. In other words, something must have, there must be something, there must have been some wisdom which Joseph applied until a very funny background. Then he passed through very dark moments in his life, a slave, in prison, and he still ended up at the top. He must have known something which kept him afloat. And this afternoon, very quickly, we are going to learn from the word of God a few things which can make us become intentional and break the barriers of stagnation and be able to move. You know, somebody could have given up on Joseph. The best career he had, he had until the time he became a prime minister, was rearing his fathership. That was the best career he had. Because after that one, the one he got was to be a houseboy. And let me tell you, I don't think it was progress moving from being a houseboy to going to prison. And then you become in charge of all the prisoners. If Joseph was to write a CV, in all the places he has ever worked, he would have written, I reared my father's ship. I worked for Port Mrs. Potiphar. And then I was the deputy of the, uh, the, the person in charge of prison. Do you think he would have gotten a job? See, somebody would have dismissed him. But let me tell you, there is a secret. And the secret of the secrets is fearing God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 39, and maybe you can project for us. I would want us to start there. Genesis chapter 39. And we are going to read a few verses. Let's read together. When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as her. I want you to hold it there. This is one of the secrets of rising high in spite of the stagnation you may be finding yourself in right now. Ensuring that the Lord is in it. The Lord becomes your right. In the midst of a lot of darkness, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. And I like what you have just done symbolically, ensuring on daily basis that you are connecting with God. As you go out for your business, as you get started in escorting your children to school, as you leave your room to go to school, the Lord, you ensure that you are in partnership with God. 
Joseph was in partnership with God. And because of that, just that, so he succeeded in everything he did. Remember I said, progress and success and growth. You cannot live out in one or the other. When you talk about success, you are talking about growth. You are talking about success. And maybe let me start. I try to look to, to get the definition of the word, dictionary definition of the word intention. And some of the words which, were, which came from the dictionary was, something that is intentional is done on purpose. It is done deliberately. And it is done with intent. Purposeful, deliberate, with intent. Ensuring that you are walking with the Lord must be deliberate. And I praise God that you are here. This is a deliberate move to come to the house of God. And I keep on saying there are some blessings which are attached to the place. You will not, no matter how spiritual you are, when you are absent, you cannot be a partaker. I also tried to look at the definition of the word progress. And a few words that came out were progress, wherever there is a progress, there is a movement. Advancement through a series of events. Development through time to a higher or more developed stage. It is moving from glory to glory. One level to another. One stair to another one. Not backwards, but upwards. Now that is progress. And I know, thank God for the past six months, and we are almost ending the, last, the seventh month. And I know there are those things you had in mind. You, would, you wanted to make progress at the beginning of the year. Let me tell you, it took Joseph many years. So it is too early to give up. I want to encourage you, it is too early to give up. Just ensure that the peace of God is reigning. Remember I said that his divine power has given us everything but for godly living. So the boundaries, God will only give you progress if it is within the, his boundaries. He does not pay for goods he has not ordered. Sawa, sawa. You know, in the corporate world, there are two things which any corporate, which they keep on doing. And even us here in the Reverence Church, that's why we are coming up with a strategic plan. And that is monitoring and evaluation. If you don't ask yourself, how far am I, you will never know how far you are. And this is because where monitoring and evaluation is done in almost every uh, institution is because we desire to progress and grow in life. Even a child, have you ever seen a child when she's able to make the first few steps? She's wobbling all around, but finally she gets to where mom is. And she's, he stands and he craps for himself for the achievement. I have walked from there to here, me. And he thinks you are not celebrating, he celebrates himself. And that is why they talk about self-actualization. It is progress. It is when you move from the basic and you start growing. We all love. It is an inborn desire to grow. And that's why one of the, I won't tell you who, but I remember because we got our children at the same time, our firstborns, her daughter took too long, over one year, to get teeth. So she came to visit my house and she told me, Aki Mama Nyambura. Imagine ajapata ajamea meno. Mi naona ntampereka hospitali. It's because every mother would want to see their, his children or her children grow. So growth is inborn. And so when it does not come, whether you verbalize it or not, you feel frustrated. 
And I'm not ignorant. Maybe I'm talking to somebody who is feeling so frustrated this afternoon. But let me tell you something. By the way, it is biblical to do yourself, to do evaluation. Project for us, Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, uh, 3b. Romans chapter 12, verse 3b. It says, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. Evaluation is godly. And maybe you are listening to me this afternoon. And could be you are in one of these situations. In these situations. You started and you are very excited with the progress so far. You can actually give a testimony. If right now I said who has a testimony, your heart would be up. Or maybe you are in this category. You started, no movement, no change, no returns. You are stuck, disappointed, and frustrated. Or you started, life happened, you have regressed, and now you are worse than you started. You have given up, or you are at the verge of giving up. I want to encourage you this afternoon, which if you are, I've talked about you, I want you to embrace what I, I love listening to Joyce Meyer. And there's one thing she says. She says, this one too will come to pass. I am telling you, even your regression will come to pass. And we are, going, we are disconnecting. We will progress, not regress. John Maxwell says, you can decide every day to say, you are either up or on your way up. This afternoon, Maybe there's a certain area you are feeling you are down. I want you to start, because we have, we have said it can be intentional. See yourself on your way up. And imagine God has a way of coming to your help when you decide you want a change. Therefore, as we continue, I want you to be prepared to learn and unlearn. Stop doing... St some things you have been doing, and maybe they have been sabotaging your progress. In other words, you are going to unlearn some things this afternoon. Or relearn. There are things you used to do. And when you are doing it, there was progress. You stopped, you stagnated. In other words, you are going to pick it from where you left it. And together, we are going to move forward. Intentional living can be likened to a GPS system in a car. GPS system in a car. This system does several things. Number one, it shows you where you are to go. Before you even get started, let me come closer. There is Uber. Before you leave where you are, you tell it where you want to go. Am I talking to somebody? You put in your destination even if before you get started. It has a beginning point. Once you feed the destination in a GPS system, it calculates for you the route and path to follow. Intentional living points to us the path. Now you know. Now if you don't put your destination, are you sure you are going to go anywhere? Do you know where you are going? Do you, do you have goals for the specific areas in your life? You are in the area of faith, family, finances. Do you have a plan? Can you put in, put in a destination where you want God to help you? One of the ways of putting a destination is knowing the word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 105, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and light for my path. Therefore, it, me it simply means if you are so lazy in knowing what the word of God is saying about certain areas of your life, you will remain stagnant. 
And very quickly, I want to talk about some basic actions for any intentional progress. Some basic actions for intentional progress. To do something deliberately and make progress on the same, several factors need to be in place. Number one, for you to make any progress, number one, you must identify the special gift from God. Everyone has a gift. And as long as you don't know your mission in life, you'll be frustrated and fulfilled and you'll keep on regressing. So you must identify, because we are not the same. Project for us, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 in New Living Translation. Ephesians 4 verse 7. Ephesians 4 verse 7 says, however, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Tell your neighbor you have a special gift. And your gift is not necessarily the same as your neighbor. The problem is you want to do what you saw your neighbor doing. You saw your neighbor has started a kiosk. You also go and start a kiosk. And you are an introvert. Customers wanakuja, hata uogei na wao. Unajua those introverts, unakaga kama unawasubua. Unamweka shopkeeper, hapedi kuogea. Niweo unamuskuma, but get a mat keta there. Anakuzi atasiri ujauliza. You are asking for this one, she tells, and by the way, we also have this. Now that is person who is on their mission. And maybe you are not making any progress because you are misplaced. Seek to identify. You are cut for what? Learn with it and you will enjoy it. And verse 14 of the same Ephesians 4, verse 14, it says, Then we will no longer be immature like children. Then, you know, once you identify what is your special gift, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every weed of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with their eyes so clever they sound like the truth. Verse 15. Instead, we'll speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. What am I trying to say? Once you have identified your strength, you will not be tossed to and fro. You hear this one, you want to try this one. You hear this one, you are tossed like a child. People who have identified their gift, you can't move them. In fact, their shop can get burnt, and tomorrow you'll find her with a stool at the very, very place where the kiosk was. Na atauza. Kwanza wakipita unasema, unaona mambo ili halibika sasa, lakini tukasema, unajua ni lazima watoto wakule. Karibu, customer. Sasa, introvert, unajua takuwa kwa nyuba akiria. Hajazoea iyo. Maybe I'm talking so much about mothers. Maybe you are here and you are a student. And you made the wrong choice. So every assignment is a... It, you dread it. You don't throw. But when you have identified your strength, you are able to move very fast. Romans chapter 12 verse 6. You know God is so orderly. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 says... In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So have you known the things that you can do well? God has given you gift for doing certain things well. So tell your neighbor, there are some certain things you can do well. Tell her, and the others, you cannot, you are an unstarter. Just tell her that she's an unstarter in others. Now, if you find yourself in the ones where you are an unstarter, progress, that is 
why we are talking about intentional progress. And I want to challenge you. Purpose to have a session with yourself and find out the things you do well and you love doing them. Some of us have not made any progress because we are doing the wrong things. Understand yourself, your strengths, and plan to work on the same. Number two. Something else, another action you need to do. This first one I said identify. The things that you can do well. The special gift that the Lord has given you by his grace. The other one is focus. Guard your heart from all forms of distractions. Many people would like you to be like them. You will never be fulfilled as long as you are doing the wrong task in life. You will not make any progress. And we, can, we have got very many examples in the Bible. I started by talking about Joseph. What kept Joseph going is that he had a dream. And his dream was unquenchable. In Potiphar's place, it was not quenched. He maintained focus. Paul, the Bible says, even on his, in the prison door, Paul was an old man when he was in prison in Rome. He was a long way from home. He was awaiting execution. Everything had been taken from him. His friends, his freedom, his ministry, even his privacy. Of course, with a guard chained 24 hours, he had no privacy. However, if he could not go out to the towns to preach, he decided he can preach through books. And he's still reading his books. What helped? Paul is maintaining his focus. He knew his commission when the right appeared to him on his way to Damascus was to preach. Changes will come. When you embrace change, you'll be able to maintain focus. Because, let me tell you, changes will come. A change of job, marital status, loss of something or somebody, geographical locations. My prayer is, no daughter of impact will stop serving because you have moved from Zimmerman to Mombasa. If you are operating within your purpose and your mission, you will go and find what you can do in the house of God wherever you will find yourself. That is why you are called to be a world changer. You are not defined by where you are. You have a focus. You, nothing will distract you. You will pursue your mission. Amen. I read a book by one called Victor Franklin. His name is Man's Search for Meaning. This brother was a Jewish psychiatrist who was taken to one of the death camps in Nazi Germany. Nazis really terrorized Christians, the Jews. All his family and all his friends were murdered. And he talks in his book about one day when he stood naked in front of his oppressors. They had taken away his prisoner's clothes and even his wedding ring. And they had taken everything. His wife, his children, now his prison clothes, his wedding ring. He was all there naked alone. And they wanted to force him to deny God. But he says, he remembered. They can do everything they want to do, but they cannot change the focus in me. So I still stand with or without a family, with or without clothes. I love Jesus. As long as you have your focus right, you won't have to bow to the pressure. You won't control what people do to you. But you can control what you rea how you react to them. There is a very familiar story in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 17. We might not read, but I know we have read it even two Sundays we talked about it. The prodigal son. The Bible says in verse 17, but when he came back to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and, and spare? We can say he refocused. He had lost focus. 
He followed the wrong company, but he came back to himself. My prayer this afternoon is that you can have a meeting with yourself and find out yourself, are you still there? And I say it, there is room for you to refocus. Regain your focus. Let me tell you, when this prodigal son refocused, he, d he came up with a plan on how he'll g get back on his feet. And this was his, his plan. His focus said, I will arise and go back to my father. He even decided what he'll tell his father. And let me tell you, he was eating with the pigs, but when he regained his focus, the very same person who was being tolerated there, because the Bible says, he got, when he spent everything, nobody was willing to give him anything. But because he regained his focus and went back home, the same person was celebrated. Once you get back your focus right, even where you are lamenting now, maybe you, are, you feel you have not made as much progress. There is room for you to be celebrated. There is hope. Not at the end. Very soon. Life is daily. And you never know when. Keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Get your focus on daily basis. And the Lord will help you. Because you know what? There is no shortcut to progress. Number three, the third action. We said you identify. Get, keep focus. Number three, develop the gift. Now that you have known, develop it. Work with the people that will help you sharpen it. Develop the gift. And you know what? Developing is expensive. It requires time and effort. So are you ready to pay the price? Good things don't just come by. You have to be ready to invest time and effort. Many people like and admire the final product. They are not willing to invest in the process of development. There is that which you admire in that other family. There is that you admire in that career. But you are not willing to do what they have done to get where they are. You must be ready to invest in developing the gift. There's a very interesting story we might not read today, but you can read it at home in the book of Judges chapter 7. In the book of Judges chapter 7, in summary, is a story about Gideon. Gideon had a very large army of the 2,000 soldiers. The Bible says that God looked at the soldiers and he said that was a very big army. The criteria God used to eliminate was people who are willing to take risk. In verse 3, maybe you can just read verse 3. Genesis chapter 7 verse 3. The criteria that was used. Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 7 verse 3. Therefore, eh? yes, judges, sorry, I, which one did I say? Kuja <laughs> Mjarara? Ah, therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. And to your surprise is mine, 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000. Timid and afraid was the criteria. You are not ready to take a risk. People want to make progress. You must be able to do it afraid. Try it. Yesterday, I went to a salon somewhere. And the lady started giving me her own testimony. She told me, she has got a very beautiful salon. She told me, you know I was so afraid to leave my job. Until finally I decided to. And I, I feared working with the people. So I used to report here all alone. Her neighbor is a Kinyozi. And one of her customers used to come with her nine-year-old son. 
And one day this son came to be for a haircut, but the, the kinyozi was full. So the boy, because he knew the, sal the owner of the salon is afraid to her mother, came and told the owner, can I sit here with you while I wait? And she told him, yes. Then the boy engaged her. And this is what the boy told her. Lafrey, how much money do you make in a month? Hey. She could not believe herself. She said, now, that is my secret, but I make enough for myself and everything that I want to do. The boy didn't leave it there and said, is it possible for you to get another desk? And maybe you get somebody else who can be doing the same work you do in your salon. Now, she didn't expect this from this size. She said, yes, I can try. Yeah, you know, you can get an extra coin from another person. Said yes. You know now you are you're looking at the person you are arguing with, you can't put an argument. So when the boy finally went for the haircut, this friend of mine was left wondering what to do. And this is what she did. She could not sleep that night. The words of this boy kept on ringing in her head. So she was weighing the, 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 the challenge versus what the boy was. Why? Why? Anyway, to cut the long story short, finally, he went by the boy's advice. He got another desk and welcomed another person. After, not long after that, the boy came again. He said, oh, you got another person. See, now you can see I've got an extra coin. She said, yes. Now why this story came, it is because now she has taken over almost the whole Kafro. She started one desk. Now she has got several. She has got... But the challenge came from this boy. You must be ready to take a risk. These people could not take a risk. They were eliminated. If you want progress, you must be ready to take a risk. And as if that was not enough, God was still not satisfied. He went another one. And the next one, I think it is in verse... Um, the one for the, I think, verse 6. Verse 6? No, I think it's verse 5. The classification, where it took place. Verse 5? Quickly, quickly, time is running fast. Higher. Only 300 of the men. <laughs> when Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who, who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. In the other group, put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Verse 6. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. They were not ready to pay the sacrifice. Let me tell you, you want progress, you must be ready to pay the price. Number four, establish and maintain godly and relevant relationships. Establish and maintain godly and relevant relationships. Your relationships at home, church, or even at workplace are pushing you forward, stagnating you, or taking you back very fast to where Jesus got you from. Your relationships. The prodigal son, the Bible says, he had gone and enjoyed himself to a certain rich man. That man was not making him make progress. He was regressing. He was eating with the pigs. The Bible talks in book, the book of Psalms chapter 1 that the people you stand with, you talk with, they determine how far you will go. This reminds me of this scandal um, of one of the former presidents of the U.S., Bill Clinton. I wonder whether a number of you can remember. A scandal he involved himself with. He had risen to that level of a president. But because of a wrong relationship, he almost came to bring down. The people you are relating with, they are either pushing you forward or pushing you backwards. Therefore, it is an opportunity for you at the middle of the year to go and audit your relationships. And 
when it comes to relationships, they will help you keep your boundaries. What helped Joseph get to the top? He minded his relationships. How he landed in prison is because in the book of Genesis 39 and verse 9, the Bible says, when Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him, this is what the Bible says. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you. This is Joseph telling Potiphar's wife. Because you are his wife, how can I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Could it be you are trying to make wrong connections for your progress? Unfortunately, it matters. You may do it. The other day, a friend of mine was telling me how her daughter shared with her. She's a student, and the lecturer wanted a deal so that she may get a good grade. Thank God for godly daughters. She shared with her mother. That's how her mother now came to know. Wrong relationship, thinking they will give you progress. You will get a better grade. But this girl knows her values. She knows her boundaries. I don't need a man, I don't need a lecturer to get a good grade. I don't need a boss to relate with to get a promotion. I don't need to bow that law for progress. Because God has a way of pushing you forward. And this afternoon, intentional progress will call for you to evaluate your values and say, if God cannot provide it, I don't need it. Joseph worked hard. Joseph knew his relationships. Actually, he was so brand with his boss, who was Mrs. Potiphar. How can do such a, do such a wicked thing and sin against God? If it is going to prison, let me go to prison. Actually, even the other day, a friend of mine also told me that her daughter resigned because the boss was insisting he has to sleep with her. She decided, I better miss this progress. Assisted by man, it will need to be sustained by man. But if it is from God, he will sustain it. I want to speak to every daughter of impact this afternoon. May your progress be from God. Because if it is from God, he will sustain it. It cannot go down to the grave. It cannot. Joseph still rose to the top. His dream still came to pass. The brothers and sisters still bowed. The parents still bowed because he maintained his boundaries. Remember what I said about the prodigal son? The prodigal son was lured in by other relationships. If you remember the reaction of the older son, he was saying, you, this son of yours went and spent all his money with prostitutes, long relationships again. He had left the caring father for others who later left him. My prayer is that you not leave God because of others who can leave you. All may change, but Jesus never. He had enjoined himself to a certain citizen. I don't know whom you have enjoined yourself to. So that you may get that contract. You don't need them. God will give it to you. If it is yours. The Bible says that the door he has opened, no man can shut. But let me, can I surprise you? The progress of this prodigal son started when he went back. And I've got good news for you. You can go back. You can retrace your steps. You can re refocus. And you can be celebrated one more time. His progress started when he went back to his father. Your progress is your responsibility. Verse 18 of Luke 15 says, he came up with a plan. 
and that and that is my 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 last action which you need to do for you to make progress have a plan you know in the corporate world even in a bank if you want a loan for a business they ask you for the business plan it is because they know for you for you to ask that money you must have sat down. They want you to sit down. Evaluate your business plan and know whether it will be profitable. They know from your plan whether it is a viable business. And I want to challenge every daughter listening to me this afternoon. Do you have a plan for your life? Are there things you have told God? Making the plan is your responsibility. And then God brings it to pass. So, Proverbs 16, verse 3. Proverbs 16, verse 3, that will be our last verse. Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. Which plan? Do you have any plan? When you go to, to the Lord, do you just say, Lord, help me, bless me, help me to grow in what? Where? By the way, have you realized they are all related? Identify, develop, maintain the right relationships, and then the Lord causes them to succeed. So do you have a plan? Do you have plans for the various aspects of your life? Remember we said intentional progress, it is deliberate. You can't just wake up and you have no plan. And I'm, don't be surprised if you, have, if you are still stagnated. It's because maybe God comes around like that manager in a bank. He's asking you, what do you want? Lord, just bless me. Just bless me. Bless my children with what? I want to challenge you. Become more specific from today. Amen. So that when the Lord answers it, you will know he has done it. Develop priest Christ within the boundaries of what is godly and then do it. And once you do it, Proverbs 16 verse 3 becomes your portion. They will succeed. And you know, good habits, once you are figured out and you make that habit, good habits that will honor God. You know they say, something done once is an experience. If you do it twice, it gets your attention. If you do it three times, it becomes a pursuit. By the time you are doing it the fourth times, it has become a good habit. People with good habits, which they have figured out, the Lord has already revealed to them their cut for what? you will automatically find yourself progressing because you're operating in your area of strength. May the Lord help you, even in ministry. Remember, when you're operating within your gifting, you become a blessing even to your family. Joseph finally became a blessing to his family. He was able to save his father, his mother, his brothers and sisters. He was able to save them because he maintained focus. Because he feared God. Because he shunned long relationships. Finally, his time of visitation came and he became a savior. If you identify your strength and be able to pay the price, develop it. Show interest. Let me tell you, you will find yourself progressing. You become diligent. Remember, Joseph was so diligent that wherever he was, even as a houseboy, even the boss delegates everything. You go to prison, it is delegated. A diligent, hardworking, ready to pay the price. Intentional living are, is for people who are willing to pay the price. How much have you invested in what you are doing? Your health. They say your health, your wealth. Because you can have so much in the bank, but if you are not healthy, you will not enjoy it. My prayer is, 
we will be teachable. And you know, sometimes we know the truth and we refuse deliberately. Unfortunately, when you refuse, the consequences, you cannot refuse, they are automatic. We went somewhere and somebody was talking to us about health eating. And this is how she put it. She said, we make fun about it. You are told this and this is not good for your body, but you insist you want. But you are saying, right now you are enjoying. But in the end, like the Bible puts it in the book of Proverbs, it might bite like a snake. It will ensure you will grow old in pain. Hey. Now where we were, the person shared during in the evening. So when we went for breakfast, one of our friends was telling that she's, she can't do without, so, she loves sausages so much. So she told us, I got saved last night. I don't want my old age to be full of pain. I pray that we will not be, we will stop taking coke, not because Dr. Kuria is around, but because you know it is harmful for your body. Because you will enjoy it today. But could it be you are investing pain for the future? My prayer is we'll start making intentional living. Could it be tonight you are finding yourself where you are? Like Jonah in the belly of the fish. You know what you did wrong. You entangled yourself. Could it be there is hope for you? The Bible says he prayed from the heart of the fish and the rod had. We say there is room of making a turn around. And the very things that are putting you down, the Lord will ensure there is time for celebration. The prodigal son celebrated. Nobody would have thought you could come from the pig shed to come and celebrate. You have put a robe and a ring. But it happened. Tonight you can do it. And I want to invite all of us to arise. And for one minute, I want you to reflect. Remember we agreed that we would all would want to make progress. And you know in which area you, are not, you don't seem to be making any progress. But maybe for sure you know where you derailed. And you do want us to believe in God. Because it is intentional. Come up with a plan. I will go back like that prodigal son. I will say sorry. And I will request, make a formal request. Receive me once again like your son. And he received more than his bargain. This evening, you can receive more than your bargain. And you will start making progress. Because God is faithful. I want, to, I want us to shut our eyes. And with our eyes shut. Could it be I have talked about you? You know you have compromised the standards. And you have realized and you know it. You are not making any progress. And you would want to make a deliberate choice this evening. That you want to make things right with God. Make God your partner like Joseph. So that everything you do, wherever you find yourself, it can succeed. Would you want me to include you in that prayer? You can lift up your hand and I'll make that prayer. Are you there? And you want me to make that prayer? Thank you for those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you because you see even in secret. And I know you know what that sister, that brother is talking about. And he's lifting up her hand because you see even the heart. And she's making a decision that she would want to make things right so that she may start making progress. And because you are a faithful God, just like Jesus, you gave that story of the prodigal son, that when he made that deliberate decision, there was celebration. I pray because of that decision, you will have mercy upon my brothers and my sisters and reach out to them and give them a new beginning, a beginning to move forward. I am now disconnecting them with those things that have been pulling them back. I am disconnecting them with those relationships that sabotage their progress. I am disconnecting them by faith. And because God you hear in heaven,
said, from this pulpit, I am speaking freedom. I am speaking new beginning upon the lives of my sisters, their families, their businesses, where they have compromised to get those deals that thou God of a second chance, you may have mercy this evening. Father, may you reach out and give them a new beginning. Release the grace now to partner with you on daily basis, to partner with you in raising children, that they will not go to seek help from which, which doctors. Because God, you are able. You are an able God. We call you able God. We are receiving from you our heavenly Father. And we know there will be divine progress because we are partnering with you this evening. We receive our freedom by faith. We receive our forgiveness by faith. We receive our jump starting by faith. And from this meeting, we are moving forward because of the grace you have released this evening. We receive by faith in Jesus' name. If you believe it, you can celebrate the Lord. May the Lord bless you. And if you forget everything I have said, just purpose to partner with the Lord. And everything you do will prosper according to Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. A loud of applause to our mom. Let's celebrate our mom. Once more. Yet again, we appreciate our mom and the doing of the Lord. Bwana Sifiwe, my question is, are you willing to pay the price? Bwana Sifiwe, we may get seated.